All right, well, welcome to part one of Terrestrial Escape Rocket Project. This is going to be a documentary that is going to hopefully walk you step by step on all the important parts of building a scratch-built homemade high-powered rocket. I decided to start with the nozzles, uh, one of the key elements in actually building a uh, high-powered rocket, uh, success or failure, uh, as I've seen uh, several times myself. A couple things that you're going to need. Um, I use a PVC bushing. And you'll notice that this one has the threading and also has the lip inside here. I spend probably another 50 cents more on this than you would just a uh, regular piece of PVC pipe that you would put into a coupler. And I do that because I don't want to mess with the screws, uh, the little machine screws that a lot of people use to actually uh, retain the part of the nozzle. They'll put uh, six to eight of them around there. Those screws are more expensive than what I would spend on, on this. So I just try to keep my cost down by using that. This is an inch and a quarter uh, PVC coupler. And uh, this is going to show you, I've, I've done a little prep work here uh, just to show you the various stages. It starts from this, these two pieces here. When the first part of the cast is done, you get the uh, stage one of the, uh, the uh, nozzle mold here. And right now you just see a flat surface in there. However, the lower half is done. Uh, I've had this prepared for probably three or four days at this point. This acts as the uh, divergent part of the nozzle. And then the finished product is going to look something like this. Uh, you have a very, um, very pronounced convergent there. And then you've got the divergent here. And what I use to actually make the con uh, convergent part is a one inch PVC cap that has a slight round to it. So it's not the supersonic nozzle that would require a uh, 60 degree convergent and a 12 degree divergent. But again, this is homemade. I don't have the tooling uh, to make the more technical parts of the nozzle, uh, but this has definitely sufficed in the past. Also what you'll need is a washer, and the washer is actually going to determine a lot, so you'll want to get yourself a good Bates grain calculator and this will actually maintain the, a consistent diameter for the, um, the convergent and the divergent meet. This is going to control the amount of power that goes out of there. Uh, you don't want too little, too wide of a nozzle, simply because if you have a wide throat diameter, uh, you'll get very little power uh, out of your rocket. If you have it too small, uh, you'll experience what's called a Cato, uh, catastrophe after takeoff, uh, essentially what will happen is that your motor will blow up and we want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, also essential to this part, you, know, you just need the basics in PVC. You need the primer, you need the PVC uh, cement. I have here an actual mixture of Hartman's Rock Hard Water Putty. Uh, it is about 50% uh, quickcrete mixed in with 50% of the Hartman's walk, uh, Rock Hard Water Putty. And the reason I do that is because the water putty just makes it um, easier to cast, easier to mold, and it's held up perfectly well. Uh, just a cup to put your mix into. Sandpaper, you definitely want to use sandpaper to prep your PVC parts. Uh, just scuff uh, aggressively the part of your bushing. Uh, inside of your, your coupler, uh, one is going to receive the, the bushing to be your... Um, divergent part of your nozzle and the other part is going to receive your convergent side as well as the uh, upper end of your motor casing. Stirring stick and what I've created here is actually out of a plastic kitchen funnel uh, a very rudimentary if you want to call it um, lower part of my mold. So this acts as kind of a bell for the quick, crit, quick crete and this acts as a uh, divergent part. It's not the ideal 12 degree angle from here to where it meets the bell, but it does allow some chamber space here to give you uh, a place for your, your gases to exit at supersonic speed. And that's something that you will definitely hear in the latter part of this project. The rocket itself may not go supersonic. I'm not planning on it. Uh, I really don't want that at this point for various different reasons, uh, but you'll want your, your gases leaving your motor at a high speed, a high rate of speed. So what I do here, typically to make one lower part, <clears throat> I put in five, 
scoops of the mix, and these are well rounded. You're going to have some excess. It's better to have a little more than not enough. Set that to the side. And the water uh, can sometimes be a little bit of a, a tricky business. I've wasted a lot of mix by learning to do this slower than I originally started. You might add to, but it's it's definitely hard to take away from once you've poured it. So just use my stirring stick here. It's very, very quick. As you'll see very soon here, this sets up fast. Essentially, once you pour this, you want to be ready to tape down your molding, the funnel in this case, because within 15 to 20 minutes, you're actually going to want to remove the lower part of your mold from the PVC. It sets up that quick. I made the mistake of leaving it overnight and what I found is it takes pliers and a lot of grunting to get that thing out and I've actually damaged the mold. You might be able to see it a little bit later in the video. So just pouring this or uh, mixing it rather very quick, very easy. I'm going to give that just a few seconds and I'm going to set this up. Put your primer on the bushing. It doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't. I've actually put on more than, than, than is what's needed, but no harm done. Get your coupler. And what I do is I just paint it right up to the retaining ring so you can see it right there. Moving on to the glue. And it doesn't take a huge amount, but you definitely want enough to, to hold this on. The motors that I make have an internal pressure of about 900 pounds. So you definitely want to make sure that you have enough glue hold these on. That should be absolutely fine. And then what I do is I just join these two here, press it together, give it a slight twist, and between this part of the bushing to the coupler there's usually about one half inch, and that will be about right. And there'll be more than enough to hold to hold that on. The other thing that it does is you'll look down into the coupler and you will see uh, past the purple primer, you'll see that lip. That acts as the same retaining ring that you know six to eight machine screws will do. And again, it's no extra cost and it's much, much more simple. So at this point, what I do, I just lay down my lower part of my mold and visually, I just center it. Start applying the tape just from side to side the whole time, just making sure that it is as centered as possible. This isn't precise by any means. Uh, again, I don't have the instruments for something like that. But what I do want to make sure is that the top part of that funnel cap is as centered as possible. That will prevent your, your rocket from doing any funky tilting once it's actually in flight. If it's off center, it will definitely go, go astray noticeably. And uh, sometimes I have to undo and readjust. but a few extra moments doing this will definitely pay off. So just to show you how quick that starts to set up, this is already a very heavy type gel. So what I'm gonna do is put just a little more water in here. 
literally just a few more drops. Just to make it flow correctly. And then what I want to do is I want to pour the concrete so it's up to the top, uh, just past that retention ring and uh, almost up to the part where the motor casing is going to butt up into the PVC retention ring. This is going to give us plenty of, uh, plenty of concrete to insulate against erosion. And I'm going to definitely pour it past the top of the funnel and the washer ultimately is going to sit right on top of that, though I'm probably not going to do that right away. So time is right to pour this. I just use the top of the funnel as, as kind of an aim. I'll stop when it's halfway poured and then I'll start to wrap the nozzle onto a solid surface. And what this does is it gets all of the air bubbles out of it. Uh, when I first started doing this I produced a couple nozzles that had some air pockets in them. And it really didn't do, do any harm. They were perfectly usable but it's not your ideal situation. We don't want this to erode while it's in flight and have a washer shoot out on us. So it's looking good so far. Everything looks centered. And then we'll just pour the rest. I usually wait about five minutes or so when the concrete is set a little bit to center the actual washer on top of this. What that does is it makes it a little sticky so the washer stays in place and then I just go ahead and create the upper part of the mold which we'll do while we're right here since I have a couple stages of this prepped. So that's in there. I'm going to let that set. I'm going to set it to the side. I'm going to bring out our partially completed one and you'll notice here this is a flat surface. Like I said, I did this three or four days ago at least. I've sanded down all this here. So you've got your divergent here, kind of a bell shaped at the end, uh, constricted in the beginning, but no washer as of this point. Uh, identical process up to this point as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and center that washer. Looks good. And then I think what I'll do is I'll add a little more concrete mix to this because you want to have plenty of plenty of concrete on top of this. If you don't have it, then it's going to erode and you're not going to get a decent amount of power out of it. Some people say convergent isn't all that necessary. Um, that point has its merits, but I like getting... Uh, I like getting some speed out of my rockets, so not enough speed, it will tilt over. Too much speed, it will go out of sight, and if you have a limited launch area like I do, then it's just simply not going to work. I make the mixture, by the way, on top of the second part of the mold, I make it a little more thick than I do for the bottom. It doesn't have the cracks and the, the threading and the PVC bushing to work its way into. And I want the top part of the mold to be rugged, you could say. So you see this is a thicker mix. I might even add even a little bit more to that. Again, plenty of excess here, but don't worry about that. It's better that it's done right and be strong than to not have enough. very thick. Alright, so just the last second tweaking on the positioning of the washer. Everything looks good. This is going to go right on top of it. Kind of visually pick a place inside of the bushing or in the coupler rather, to bring my concrete up to. And that way I can feel confident that I have enough, enough concrete in there.
you need to make sure that you leave enough enough space to firmly attach your, your motor mount to. Again, giving this a light wrap on the table just to make sure that we get all the air pockets out of it. Some minor air pockets, when you pull the mold out, you know, can be repaired, but I uh, don't think they're really as strong as if it's part of the original mold. Then I take the one inch PVC cap, uh, just insert it into the mold. Let it rest there for a quick second. Push it down. You'll definitely notice that the if you have enough concrete in here, you'll notice that the concrete is going to start to seep up over the edges like it's done here. That is that is a good sign. We want that. And I also tape these down. Just to make sure that the pressure doesn't pull this up. So that is that. So we've got the upper half built. This will become a completed nozzle. We have the lower half setting up actually quite quickly. You can see it's already really hesitating to even flow when I when I pour it to the side. And in about 15 minutes, I'll just do the last uh, very brief part of this uh, tutorial. And about an hour later, we'll go ahead and bore the hole through. I use a uh, 5 16th inch bit. The washer itself is just a little bit smaller than 3 8 I'm going to use either 3 or 4 Bates grains, uh, 1.25 inch by 2 inch in these motors. I haven't decided as of yet. You know, ultimately it's going to depend upon the weight of the piston system that I've developed, but, but that's what it's going to look like. You're going to have your uh, convergent, probably about a 30 degree convergent, and you're going to have about a 10 degree divergent, uh, as well as a little bell nozzle right here uh, on the uh, on the exit so we'll get that finished and uh, I'll upload it